Okay, so I have to do a little bit of a setup for our question of the day. Last night, Candace and I were out drinking with some friends and family. That's the first part of the setup. So usually the best discussion questions happen when you are drinking, right? Typically. So we were talking about the Super Bowl broadcast because on our last trip, Candace and I were on an airplane. My brother was having to text us updates about what was happening in the game. And so we were just talking about the Super Bowl broadcast, and I brought up that on Nickelodeon, they did a Super Bowl broadcast that had SpongeBob and Patrick doing the the play-by-play and the color commentary with a couple of, like, real football analysts. And it was a ton of fun. They even had, like, Dora the Explorer who would pop up and explain penalties and and that kind of thing. So the question came up, and it's going to be our question of the day for this episode— If you could choose any two or three Disney characters to do a live sporting event broadcast as the commentators, who would your Disney characters be? Oh, I love this. And why? And why? And why? Yes. Okay. Who would they be and why? I got one. I need to get the other. I already have my answer. Okay, Go go for it. We'll let you start. This is going to be no surprise, but I would have Hades, Pain, and Panic. Okay. Oh. That would actually be classic. You'd be like, uh, I don't know what's going on. They threw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I no. love that. He's making a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Yeah. I, you don't even have to do real any explanation about why on that. That would just, that be... just That would <laughs> yeah. be ideal. Mm-hmm. Who's next? I was going to do different characters from different movies, but I liked the route you picked, Lariah. So I'm going to say Joy, Sadness, and Disgust from Inside Love Out. It. Oh my gosh. I Or it's between Joy and Anger, because I could see... I think you have to have joy there for when they score points. Yeah. And anger for when stupid things happen. Like yeah. maybe anger explains the penalties. Maybe. And disgust. Their outfits are so last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those three. Love that. That's perfect. Okay. Candace, or do you want me to go? Do you want to go last? So I think, well, if you've got them locked and loaded, go I ahead. I do. Okay. I'm just going to go with two, and they're part of the Fab Five. Goofy, for one, because he has the background for football. He did an he entire does. episode explaining football back in, like, the 40s. Mm-hmm. So he has the chops to be able to do it. Right. And then for the same reason why you would want anger included in yours, Lacey, Donald would have to be one of the color commentators Absolutely. and just getting overly frustrated when things aren't going perfectly or when somebody has a penalty, just having him just blow up. And you wouldn't even need the bleep button because you can't understand. It right. Anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so goofy and Donald would be my choice for the commentators. Nice. Love it for the Super Bowl. Nice. So I'm kind of tossing things around my head a little bit. So I think Buzz Lightyear would be my rules guy. Yeah. Yep. To explain the rules about Mm -hmm. things. And then I think I would want Maleficent to do the regular commentary, like call the plays and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Charlotte LaBeouf to do color commentary. Oh, Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I can about hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Travis. When a woman says sometime or later, she means never, ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Maleficent and Charlotte. Can't you in see that? In a booth that? together. Yeah. Can't you see that? Kind of, I can. Yeah. I think it'd be amazing. Like, yeah. You would have to have a camera on them constantly because Maleficent would be like, mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I think it would be magical. I mean, that would be all I would need to watch from the entire game. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. That's silly. Okay. Not an idea. It may be. <laughs> so if you are a, as a, if you are a long time, first time, come and interact with us on our social media pages and let us know who you would pick from the Disney universe to be the commentators for your favorite sporting event. Yes. 
We want to hear from you. Hi, I'm Scott. I'm Candice. I'm Lacey. And I'm Lariah. Grab a drink and come hang with us at the Hangar Bar. Okay, welcome back to the Hangar Bar, everyone. We are super glad to have you along the along the ride, along for the ride. Attraction. The attra- <laughs> <laughs> drink. <laughs> yes, along for the attraction with us. We are, are super excited to have you back listening. And today I have what we think is a really good topic. Candace and I, as you know, recently went to Disney And there are some things that we had our mind changed about. So we're going to talk about that with the four of us today. Have Lacey and Lariah kind of challenge our assumptions and let them know how our assumptions were challenged as we went through. Because we did. We went into it with an open mind and... And And open hearts. Open hearts. And honestly had our minds changed about, I think, quite a bit. Yeah. I agree. So we'll talk. There's, I think there's probably three or four big things that we'll talk about, like, big subcategories and we'll see where it goes from there mm-hmm. so candace where do you want to start which big change in in perspective do you want to start with i think i would probably have to start with well mine's kind of a wrap-up like the thing that's sticking out in my head is more of a wrap-up topic okay so let's start here okay let's start with the dining plan oh yes Yes, mm-hmm. I want to know because they've changed it to only two levels they now. Have. Yes, yes. The, two levels. The deluxe dining plan with all the food is no longer available, and they've tightened down how they like they don't allow you to modify credits anymore, so you can just go buy a whole bunch of snacks if you don't use them. Really? Like you can't change your dining credits into snack credits to be mm-hmm. able to go buy snacks before you leave. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So from a dining plan perspective, I'm still a fan. I yes. I like the what I like about the dining plan is that it's prepaying for your food. Right. It's saving so you don't get sticker shock when you go on vacation cuz food at Disney is expensive. Mm-hmm. So in that aspect, I really I still appreciate the dining plan. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we're ever going to use it again. Really? Mm -hmm. There's other ways we think we can do the same thing and allow ourselves more flexibility, more freedom, and more... Aligning to the way that we normally eat. Right. Because it's still so much food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's a quick service or... Yep, there's the quick service option, Mm -hmm. which is two quick service meals a day and a snack credit and then your refillable mug. Mm-hmm. And then there's the standard Disney dining plan, which is a quick service, a table service, and a snack credit, and your refillable mug. Okay. And again, you can use those credits and combine them however you want throughout the length of your stay. Once they're gone, they're gone. Right. And with the standard, is that the one you two went mm-hmm. with? Yes. With that, you get you said you get one table service, one quick service, and one snack per day. Per day. Mm-hmm. Per now, person. with the table credit, what does that entail? Do you get this um, just an entree? You get an entree and a dessert. And a dessert. Okay. And, and a then beverage. a beverage. And that can be non-alcoholic or alcoholic for guests over 21. And it includes, like, sodas. Yes. Like, you can get a specialty cocktail or a drink and and a soda. Or coffee or, or a coffee. tea or... And. Right. And. Okay. So, multiple nights, I would get my dinner, my dessert, an iced tea, and a cocktail, and it was covered by the dining plan. Mm-hmm. And then quick service meal with a drink, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that no drink, dessert. no dessert, and that drink can only be non-alcoholic. Anything drink. that they serve at the quick service, I think, yeah. right? Gotcha. Correct. Well, some of the quick services have alcoholic beverages. And you can do that. Can you? Yeah. On the quick service plan? Yes. Okay. If okay. you're over 21. Yeah, and then the snack is usually anything under about twelve dollars. Right. Okay. On the menu, there's a few during festivals. There's a few things that were really good deals on the dining plan yeah. um, that were maybe in the fifteen sixteen dollar range, but there's not very many of those. Yeah, but a lot of the food booth options 
that we saw did actually qualify as snack credits. So that was a way that we got to unload those snack credits, which we wouldn't have used anyway because we felt like we were eating all the time again. But having those available to use and the portions were plentiful enough that we split everything Mm. that we got from the food booths. And it was perfect because we got to try a whole bunch of different stuff um, and have enough of a taste of it that we knew whether we liked it or not, mm-hmm. but didn't have a whole portion that we had to eat or figure out what to do with. Right. And we started off splitting food because we didn't want to go through the week completely full just all full all the time. Yeah. So we would use one quick service credit and get a cheeseburger and fries and a drink, pay for one drink. And split the cheeseburger and share fries, and mm-hmm. it was the right amount of food. But then later in the week, we're how do we use all these credits? Right. We're like trying to squeeze in meals places, mm-hmm. be, at which again, the last three or four days, we're like, are we ever going to stop eating? Yep. Mm-hmm. And so, like, the way you have to manage your way through the dining plan is just, I'm, I, I'm thinking. The way we would probably do it is, okay, let's figure out what the cost for the dining plan is and let's get a Disney gift card. And as part of my regular savings routine, I'll put 15 or 20 bucks a week onto a Disney gift card and take a thousand dollar Disney gift card with me. And that's what pays for my food and drinks. Because that way you can buy what you want when you want and without having to do the like set courses you don't have that so risk have of have use it or lose it. Want it i like that idea that's a really good idea yeah and one of the things we talked about and disney should consider this so hopefully someone from disney is listening to our podcast Just tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we talked about is they're pretty rigid in terms of like those table service meal credits you get your dinner and a dessert Mm -hmm. why could they not say you get an appetizer or dessert? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way, if you're not a dessert person, you can get an appetizer. Mm -hmm. Or if it's like Candace and I, we say, let's get an appetizer for the table. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets their own entree. And then we split a dessert at the end, too. So we split an an appetizer, which would be more in line with what we normally do when we go out to a sit-down restaurant. Mm -hmm. We get an appetizer to share. We don't each get our own appetizer. We get an entree. And then we're like, I want something sweet to finish my meal. Let's let's agree on a dessert and split a dessert. So I think they need to try and build in some more flexibility. But until they do... I, and I'm not going to say I don't want it anymore because I think it's a bad deal. It's probably not the greatest deal in the world. I think we'll save money by doing the gift card idea. But I I just – I want more flexibility in how I eat. And, and again, I, I think that is specific to the way that we eat. I think the dining plan, if it's worked properly and planned out effectively, is 100% the right answer for some families. Right. But that's another thing that you have to plan while you're planning your vacation. So it's like one more step in the puzzle Mm -hmm. that you have to figure out if you're going to get this. Where do you want to go? Make your reservations. Look at the menus. Decide how you're going to split out those credits and kind of stick pretty close to that. Mm -hmm. Right. And one of our group halfway through the week is starting to panic like, oh, I've used too many credits. I'm going to have to pay for all these meals. And has to spend time thinking about that versus, hey, I just ran my gift card and I still have $600 worth of room on my gift card. I'm fine. I can do what I want. Right. It's a how do I manage my plan? So it right. just gives you something else to manage that you normally wouldn't have to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Anything okay. else that we want to talk about with the dining plan before we move on to our next mind-altering situation? I don't think so, but I did appreciate like how you can keep track of it in the My Disney Experience yes. app and how quick that does catch up. However, I will say some of the people in our group did have some trouble like getting charged actual money for their meals instead of the dining plan credited. So you do have to be kind of careful and keep your eye on stuff like that, but Disney is very quick to fix it. Oh, good. good. If that does happen. Yeah, and I think it was so new in release because it had only come back at the middle of january yeah Mm. we were there at the beginning of february so cast members weren't 100 percent sure how to work it lots of new cast members too which was good to see 
it made me happy Mm -hmm. but like learning all of that has got to be challenging yeah Yeah. so some of it and maybe some of my mind changing about the dining plan is because of that when you go stand in a line at a food booth and you order something that's a snack credit and then an alcoholic beverage and they have trouble separating that out it just seems like it's more trouble than it's worth to have to be like okay i'm gonna do this on the dining plan and then i need you to run another ticket for this Mm -hmm. it just it didn't seem as convenient as I remember the dining plan being. Mm. Well, that's that's too bad because yeah. we that was part of a reason why you waited so right. long to go back was for that. Yeah, yeah, wait for the dining plan again. But I like that idea because we also had a pretty hefty gift card mm-hmm. that from some work recognition programs that that I have. So we were using that for a lot of our alcoholic beverages and and that kind of thing and that's where we kind of came up with the idea of just load up a gift card and have that be your prepaid food budget and Such that a way smart idea. you can keep your eye on a balance because they always give you a receipt with a balance of what's left mm-hmm. and if you need to reload it you absolutely can but it, again it kind of saves that sticker shock of oh my lord yeah mm-hmm. yeah what did we drink right <laughs> right right <laughs> Because yes. that money can only be used on Disney, so right. might as well. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing that we want to talk about where Candace and I had our minds changed from things you've heard previously in this podcast, I'm going to throw two things together in this one because they're both attraction-based. Okay. Candace, talk to us a little bit about screen based rides and trackless ride systems okay so i live i've lived for a long time with theory that imagineering should not be lazy i think we talked about it in our imagineering episode a few episodes back i still hold that true i mean that's something that that's going to be a ride or die for me forever Mm -hmm. however i will say actually having experienced the trackless ride systems of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Rise of the Resistance, all of that versus just watching ride throughs on YouTube. It's still a very immersive experience and there's enough physical attributes and it's still a 4D experience enough so that you kind of forget you're looking at a screen. Wow. Mm-hmm. I love hearing that. Now, I will say, I think all of the, all of those attractions that we did go on for the first time this trip were running in A mode. So there was no, no modifications that were being done because something wasn't working right. And usually it's not the screen parts of those. It's the physical parts. It's the physical parts mm-hmm. that kind of wonk out sometimes right but i think the fact that those physical parts were working as they were supposed to helped sort of detract you know distract you from the fact that there was screens happening yeah so Loria, in one of our earlier episodes this season we were talking about screen-based things and you commented if i remember correctly about you're not looking forward to the day when you meet characters in holograph form Okay. I said that. You that said that? Yeah, it was me. Oh, shoot. Maybe it was I, both of I us. I remember that. Yeah, it could have been both of you. It, I, I would have to go back and listen again. But yes, we talked about the fact that like meeting a character in holograph form would really kind of suck. What changed my mind about screen-based attractions is on Rise of the Resistance. I'm not going to do huge spoilers because this is just pre-show. I'm not going to talk about the ride too much. But in the pre-show, BB-8 comes rolling out and starts talking, and there's a hologram of Ray that talks to the group in the pre-show. It's everything Star Wars is. So, like, you think about the original Star Wars movie where Princess Leia is a hologram talking to Luke. Yes. This feels like Ray is talking to you in that same kind of format because BB-8 is projecting it. And I thought of that comment as that was happening. I'm like, I'm I'm about holograms, but they have to do it right. 
Yeah. It has to fit the story. Right. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. have a holographic Mickey Mouse. Right. Because right. it wouldn't work. Right. That sounds perfectly placed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very it really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the I've also been one that's been kind of against screen based attractions. But as I was going through these and, and as I was going on rides and attractions this time, I realized just how, and dependent sounds probably more negative than I intend it to, but how dependent on screens Disney has been for probably the last 35 or 40 years. Mm -hmm. You look back to rides that were opened in the 80s, like um, Mission Space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a screen-based attraction, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's that old, but I get your point. Right. Yeah. It's... Like, even if it was the 90s, that's 40 years ago. We'll look at Star Tours. Right. It's all that is is a screen well, and a simulator. The 90s is 30 years ago. I can't do math. <laughs> but, yeah, Star Tours is another example of something that's been screen-based. Figment. You Figment is something that's screen-based. A lot of their shows, Mickey's Magic, mm-hmm. is a theater-style screen show. Muppet, Muppet Vision. Vision 3D. <laughs> Everywhere you look around that park... You're looking at a screen. Mm -hmm. But you don't mind because Disney is so good at those 4D effects as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think we all fear them sort of moving away from. But again, on Remy, you think, okay, that's a trackless ride system where your focus is on a screen the whole time. There are enough physical elements. And like when when you're going uh, when you're running underneath the stove, they hit you with a blast of heat. They, you're going through the kitchen and you're walking by the this the onions being cut and you have that smell. Really? Do your eyes water? No, no, it's no. not that strong. But like you do get that <laughs> hit of onion. It's just a room crying. full of you're onions. Like, right. <laughs> I can't see the rest of the attraction. Because I'm crying. And like there's the physical elements when you go through the pantry mm-hmm. you're you're next to a wheel of cheese and it's really in the room mm-hmm. and even the queue for that one has both screen based elements and physical based elements like you see um anyone can cook what's his name gusto gusto i'm an idiot you see gusto pop up and talk to you during the pre-show as the the ghost like Remy sees, mm-hmm. because from the f- the first, you sort of grow or you shrink down throughout the entire queue. Again, they do such a good idea with a good job with the queue. When you walk in, you're human size. By the time you get to the ride vehicles, everything around you is huge. So you feel like you've shrunk down to the size of a mouse. Oh, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. And the ride, ride vehicles themselves in that particular one are so stinking adorable. I thought I was going to throw up. They were so cute. Well... Which is saying a lot. Yes. So I have a question with Remy, uh, Rise of the Resistance, and Mickey and Minnie's um, rail... Railway. Railway. Runaway railway. Runaway railway. <laughs> it's uh, a tongue twister. Yeah, it is. Say it correctly. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Nice job. Wow. <laughs> I'm so it. proud. <laughs> So I've only seen bits and pieces of ride throughs of those three rides. They look so similar. Did it feel similar? No. Not at all. Really? Okay. Which is another reason I think I gained a new appreciation for that style. Okay. Because like even the movement of the vehicles was very, very different. Okay. And it wasn't just, we're going to turn you backwards for no reason. It was... It fed into the story, and it made you look where you needed to look to fully immerse in the story. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Guardians is another one. Oh. Guardians. That is a fantastic roller coaster that's basically screen-based. Really? Yeah. So it's inside? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you're looking at basic projections everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. Like, if you've ever seen, like, people post that with lights on, you're just basically... In a big running through room. a big dark room. Oh, so like a space mountain with the lights on. Right. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. So everything, all the stuff is projected there, but it's probably the best roller coaster I've ever been on. And, really? And it, it's part of the reason. I, I think the screens with that particular attraction 
are why people have such problems with motion sickness. Mm. Because the vehicles themselves, they do turn 360 to keep it smooth. And it is a very, very smooth coaster. Mm -hmm. But I think it's moving so fast. And you're trying to focus on parts of the projection to see the story that's playing out around you. That when you're spinning and trying to focus in the dark and it's all disorienting because you don't know which way the track is going to go. I think that's what people make get motion sick about because their mi- their brain can only process so much movement mm-hmm. so quickly. Makes sense. Huh. Because there were parts of that where I even had to shut my eyes. And I'm not really a motion sick person. But there were parts of it where I'm like, I can't do this right now. And you two are thrill ride people, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was one part of that attraction that you get into the big room, and it's it's like if you think roller coasters is just a typical like corkscrew corkscrew Mm -hmm. effect on a roller coaster, but you're in a dark room and you're going around the moon. It was the moon, right, or was it a planet? No, it was the moon. And like as you go through this corkscrew, like normally you would have to turn your head to see what was in the middle as you're going through the car rotates. So like as you're going down this corkscrew at it feels like 4000 miles an hour, you your car rotates. So you're going along with it and it stays in your view the whole time. Oh, cool. It is an amazing roller coaster. Did you ride Tron? I did not. Oh, you did not. We did not. not. Everybody else in our party did, but we did not. What did they say about Tron? They liked it. It was short. Oh, okay. It's only like a minute and a half long. Yeah, it's like. I believe for the whole thing. And like, that. okay, so the math does not math out on that one because I am not spending practically any amount of time in a line for a minute and a half. That's what she said. I wonder how long Flights of Passage is. It has to be. It that's has to that's be. probably a seven or eight minute attraction, I would yeah. guess. There's no way that's anything less. But again, than that's another minutes. screen-based attraction. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Soren is screen another based. screen-based attraction. You look around, there's so many screens, but they do it right. It's a four-minute attraction? It's a four-minute okay. attraction, but it was worth it. And it there's even like screens forever. in um, Living with the Land, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Like when you get towards the end, well, even the right even at the, the beginning. beginning. Mm-hmm. That is true. Mm-hmm. And you get the awesome pan flute and drum solo, which we invented a dance, by the way. Really? Yeah, we'll have to show you the next time we're there. <laughs> please, <laughs> please. We went on living with the land three, three times. Three times. That's an amazing. Appropriate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you know Candace, she was freaking out because she wanted to get on living with the land one more time, and it almost made us late for a dinner reservation. So she was freaking out a little bit. That's... But the call of living with the land won out. So we went and. The call. <laughs> come here. That's right through when... the greenhouses. You know, there's no surprises, but come here. When, you're... when you write your Disney book, your novel, that's what it's going to be called. The call to living with the land. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. So then the trackless ride systems as well. Yes. I was impressed with all of the trackless ride systems we were on. Mm-hmm. The fact that they could take and you you go through an attraction, you don't come back in the same order you left. Mm-hmm. Like if there's four cars that start as you go, like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. So the, the hook is that you're on a train track. Goofy is driving the train that goes off one way because a, a switch got flipped and you go on a runaway through all of these different scenes and when goofy goes off to the left and you go off to the right all the cars that are in your group kind of separate they scatter huh. wow and so i think my my guess is you're all seeing the same thing mm-hmm. you're just getting there in different ways it's so hard to picture right so mm-hmm. i'm really trying hard to picture it which like I can't imagine how they came up with that concept then, right. you know? Lots of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that I think they can do with screens on those trackless ride systems is I was blown away by the way they could make you feel like you were tilting. 
mm-hmm. both in Remy and in Mickey's, there's sections where you feel like you're falling. Like in Remy's, you fall through the window into the kitchen. Huh. But your car never leaves flat ground. It doesn't even tilt up. It's just that good of screen. The, the video and the screen, the way they filmed it, it makes you feel like, and you feel like you're falling down. That does two things. It gives that roller coaster kind of feel, mm-hmm. gives some excitement to it, but it's still a very accessible ride that all you have to do is put a lap bar on mm-hmm. or a mm-hmm. seat belt or something like that. Like Rise of the uh, Rise of the Resistance was just a basic seat belt. Illusion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's amazing. And there was even a terrifying death drop in that one. Oh my god. Rise of the resistance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh Tower of Terror, screen based attraction. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think as I got there and I saw all this, I'm like, okay, I I think we've been giving Imagineering a bad rap. On the screen-based attractions, because now that we've seen how much they've been using it for how long they've been using it, they're just getting better at it. Well, and I think they kind of dealt us a sucker punch, and and they they get the bad rap that they deserve for what they did to Soren. Yeah. <clears throat> because if they would have filmed that correctly and taken the time they needed to with it, they would not have a crooked Eiffel Tower. Right. I'm hoping they fix that when they go back to. I hope so. That's coming up soon, though. Like, we got to see Soren over California again. How was it? So good. It was so good. I forgot how potato quality the video is. You can tell that video was recorded a long time ago. Well, sure. And the transitions between scenes were just jump cuts. Oh, mm-hmm. so they weren't as smooth. Right. right. Like in Soaring Over the World, when you're flying over the Antarctic and the whale jumps and lands and splashes and you go through the splash and that's when you're in the next scene, there's none of that in, in California. Mm-hmm. It's just you're flying over the Orange Grove, hard jump cut, now you're flying over farmland or whatever. But you still have the Orange Grove smell. I was yes. just about to ask. Yeah. And the ocean smell and mm. all like yeah. that whole thing. And I'm just like, oh, where have you been? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it was so nostalgic to be on Soarin' Over California. But I, I honestly think I prefer Soarin' Over the World. Really? Okay. I just want them to fix their recording, fix the way they use their screen so things aren't crooked. Okay. Each their own. Yeah. Or if they're going to keep up with Soarin' Over California, they need to re-record the video. I agree. Because we are in 4K territory. That was that was recorded in 720p. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still fantastic attraction. Mm-hmm. Glad we went on it. Mm-hmm. So what do you all want to know about our minds changing on rides or attractions? I have one. Um. This is mainly going towards you, Candace, but obviously, Scott, you know. Um, feel free to contribute. Yes, feel free to. Con- I'll just sit over here and shut up. How, what is your mindset on IP and Epcot currently? Ooh, that's a good one. That is a good one. As it stands right now. I still think what they did with Frozen and the Maelstrom is an abomination and is absolute trash. Mm -hmm. With that said, if it's appropriate and they build up the whole thing to make sense, I think it's okay. For example, the expansion they've done in the French Pavilion to include Remy and the little um, crepe shop. That they have back there and that section it all makes sense but there's still the original france pavilion there with everything that's always been there and there's still the shops and there that have been there forever that have actual french products in them and and that sort of thing and lay all is still there so you can still have that original epcot experience without having it jammed in your face and they didn't take anything away to add Remy. No. Whereas with... It was just an expansion. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. That makes sense. So I, I like think that. it's appropriate. They also had um, one of the food booths that we 
experience was based around um, Encanto. And it made sense. Oh, I love that. Wait, what was based on Encanto? Food booth. We had an empanada. I love that approach to IP as well. Mm -hmm. Was it delicious? It was delicious. Mm, Maybe not as delicious as I thought it was going to be, but Mm -hmm. it was good. Good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, and I I would agree. I think... Oh, go ahead. And like we were saying at some point, when I heard that they were doing away with Universe of Energy Mm. in favor of a Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster, anger... Because of the whole Frozen debacle. Flames. 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 Just, I've been upset about it ever since. Seeing how they've reimagined the front part of Epcot into the different world neighborhoods and seeing where that attraction sits in the area known as World Discovery, which also has things like Test Track and Mission Space and all those other things like... And Space 220. Space 220 restaurant and that sort of thing. It makes sense. And it belongs. That was going to be one of the other things that I talk about. Mine changed. Sorry. So No, just keep going. So as long as it makes sense, and it's not a change for the sake of change, I think I'm okay with it. You're here for All it. Right. But it has to make sense, and it has yes. to make sense to more than just two people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a good segue into my next mind change thing that I wanted us to talk about. Epcot is not broken. Epcot is as magical as it's as it ever was. Yes. With all of the changes they're making and all like breaking it up differently and even some of the mistakes they've made with fireworks shows and Frozen Ever After and that kind of thing in the past, they've they've moved past most of that and Epcot is I think becoming what Epcot was always meant to be. Not Walt's vision of Epcot, but truly what Disney company wanted Epcot to be from the beginning. It's amazing. Like, especially, so y'all remember where Fountain of Nations was behind Spaceship Earth? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they killed the fountain, RIP. But what they've done is they've reformulated that area into Celebration Gardens, Mm -hmm. where there's like different styles of gardens with lots of seating areas and lots of shade and all of that sort of thing where it's very inviting to go get something to eat or drink or just relax and sit and enjoy. And at the head of it all, there's a bronze statue of Walt. I love that. Ugh. I'm going to make that our thumbnail for this episode. Our, our picture, picture with Walt. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good idea. Because yeah. he's sitting there, like, leaning on his on his knees with his hands, with his hands kind of folded over. The picture, the photo pass photographer had us on either side of him sit the same way. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. it's a pretty cool picture. I, I did see the picture on um, Instagram, mm-hmm. and I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. So yeah, and that and like the the new Moana journey, journey into beautiful, water or whatever that's beautiful. called, and that makes sense. There's yeah. IP, but it's classic Epcot edutainment. Yeah, because it is educational, and it kind of smacks you upside the head. Like, okay, water is a valuable resource. Mm-hmm. This is the cycle it goes through. It's important, and we need to conserve it because if we don't, we're all gonna die. Yeah. 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 And that's one of those attractions, too, that I can see people who just are in a hurry running through that and thinking it's dumb. Mm -hmm. But if you go in and you take your time with that and read the signs and play with all the different the the water and all the different ways you can play with the water and. And it's recycled like they. It's not just constantly new, fresh water. They recycle it all the time. So they're not even wasting the water that you play with. It's it's that's amazing practicing what they preach. Yeah. Exactly. A hundred percent. And overall I just I felt that way about Epcot as a whole. Is that it still needs some TLC and they're working on it. There's still some construction walls yep. up. Spaceship Earth needs to be so let me finish this statement before you roll your eyes, Candace. No, I was agreeing with you. Okay. It was a, a roll of agreement. Yeah. Spaceship Earth needs to be closed for a long refurbishment. 
like that attraction they need to get newer ride vehicles they need to fix the 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 backwards the because the the computer kind of game thing that you play is really pretty dated it's starting to feel very much like carousel of progress Mm -hmm. and that it's becoming a dated attraction Mm -hmm. and one of those things that people feel like they have to do just because it's the big ball Mm -hmm. more than i've ever noticed that feeling that way before right so that's one that i think they need to close it and refurb it like close that one for six or eight months carefully and redo the inside of it in the right way and modernize it but who knows when they're going to do that? Because they talked about it, and then pandemic happened, and they just reopened it. Yeah. Hmm. So it's probably still on an idea backlog somewhere to to redo it. But that's that's another one they need to. I think they need to redo. So Epcot still needs some TLC, but it is still the Epcot we know and love. Yes. I love hearing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they've made a lot of changes since we've been. Yes. So I'm glad that you guys are here for it and that mm-hmm. you are rooting for Epcot and still feel like it's just as amazing as it ever was. If anything, it became more of my favorite park. Really? On this trip. Yay. Good. Somebody asked me what my favorite park was and Candace almost smacked me. I think my favorite park is Hollywood Studios. After this trip. After this trip. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Explain. Just everything they've done with Hollywood Studios has plussed it up. I get what theme they're trying to go for. Again, it needs some TLC and needs some reimagining in places. But my favorite attractions are right now, outside of Carousel of Progress, are all in Hollywood Studios. Midway Mania, Rise of the Resistance, Tower of Terror, the Aerosmith Rock and Roller Coaster. Some of the best food that I love is there. 50s prime time. You have all of Toy Story Land. You have so if they continue to kind of buy into the we're putting you in the movies instead of trying to celebrate movies, it's going to continue to just get better and better and better. And I figured out exactly what my problem is with that park. Okay. It's the most transparent, and I understand that the theme parks in general are this, but that one specifically is the most transparent money grab that I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. Okay. Because they're not even trying. Yeah. It's just like, oh, here, spend money on this. Oh, here, spend money on this. Oh, you want that? It's going to cost you money. Mm-hmm. Where in Magic Kingdom and in Epcot and in Animal Kingdom, those are all so immersive that it's just like this is going to enhance your experience so you don't mind spending money on it but hollywood studios it's probably very much like the real hollywood mm. where it's just money 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 so mm-hmm. it's like the most immersive there if is. you want to yeah. look at it that way <laughs> sure but it's also the most annoying because of that like it feels yeah. like they're saying oh we're just not going to put any effort but we still want you to spend the same amount of money and praise us for it mm. no that's not how this works Mm-hmm. When I see what you can do to Epcot, you can do that to this park as well, and I think you should, especially with the bangers that are in that park. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you say Mickey and Minnie was one of your favorite rides? Yes. That is also on my list of favorite attractions now. Oh. Candace is giving a skeptical look. Meh. Really? It was adorable. The The ride part of it itself was 100% adorable. I think they could do a lot more with, with the queue. The queue. Mm. to start the story sooner. Gotcha. Yeah, it it was definitely thrown into the Chinese theater because that's where space allowed. Mm. And I'm I'm glad they have their own attraction. They've deserved it since 1928. And I don't know why this is the first one. Louder for the people in the back. Right. (laughs) (laughs) But it needs work. Mm. Yeah, I think the queue is what needs work. Mm -hmm. The... Ride ver- the ride portion and the pre-show portion. Adorable. Adorable and everything you would want out of a Mickey attraction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. queue itself, they need, I, I think they just need, if if there is a cohesive story that ties the whole thing together, I didn't see it. You're right. Mm-hmm. You were walking into the Chinese theater. And standing in a line. And standing in a line. Really? Mm-hmm. And until you get into the pre-show room, that's all it is. 
Right. Oh, that's disappointing. Like they have movie posters of the different cartoon shorts, but that's it. Yeah, it's almost like they are trying to, they're using the Chinese theater to say, hey, you're in this line to watch a Mickey cartoon, a Mickey short. Right. And that's like that, that's not a cohesive story to the rest of the attraction. Though. Right. It would have been, and maybe it is like this, but in my mind, I think it would be cool to kind of add more to it, like a popcorn stand and like if they're going to do a theater theme, like really get into that. And the one in California actually has that. Really? Mm -hmm. When they opened that one earlier this year or last year, whenever that was, it is more set up like a movie theater. Hmm. And they do have a concession stand with a popcorn machine. It has little Mickey shaped popcorns. Mickey what? shaped popcorn. Yeah, you can't eat it because it's pretend. But oh, okay. Dang. I'm like, how <laughs> like, in the world? What? <laughs> They're gonna do it. They're gonna. Figure they will. Out a way. Someone will figure out how to do. They're that. probably working on it in the labs at Living with the Land oh. on how to get Mickey shaped popcorn, and I am for it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Concerning that ride, I just had Attraction. a bright. <laughs> Oh, Drink. I think that was the first one of the episode. <laughs> Attraction. Do you think it would be really cool if they like tried to immerse you into the cartoon like they do with the other movies? They like, do. They do. They do. I, I don't want to spoil it for you. Right. But because the surprise of how they get you into the train is awesome. The pre show and the attraction itself are very much along that theme of immersion. You are not celebrating it. You are a part of it. Like Galaxy's Edge, you're a part of Star Wars land. Mm -hmm. Toy Story, you're shrunk down to the size of a toy. Mm -hmm. Mickey and Minnie's, you become a part of that story. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to talk around Epcot or rides before we move on to my last one before we move into Candace's wrap it up one? can't think of okay so So the last one that i want to bring up that my mind was kind of changed about was i've always said that the parks are huge things feel spread out things feel like they're a yonk away from everything else on this trip the parks felt small to me Mm -hmm. really like everything was closer together than i remember it being Mm -hmm. weird yeah I, I'm and I every park we went into, I said that to Candace. I'm mm-hmm. like, this park is smaller than I remember it. And yet they haven't shrunk them. No, and it took it felt like it took us less time to get from place to place. Mm-hmm. And we still put in fifteen to twenty thousand steps a day, so mm-hmm. you know that they have not shrunk them. Right, but they just felt smaller, and I, I think we we kind of figured out that the reason they felt smaller is we've done so much talking about Disney. And like exploring the parks and understanding what's where and how they shift and how we navigate the parks, that it just felt like we knew where we were going better. Yeah. And when yeah. you know where you're going, the world seems smaller. Very much. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of my last. My mind was changed. Is I'm going to go in knowing you're going to put in a lot of steps, but things are closer together than you think they are. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's also because you didn't do a bunch of running from one end to the park to the other too i think there's some of that but we did more of that than i think candace was comfortable with and the park still felt smaller Mm -hmm. because there were times when we were like okay we're in mexico let's go over to the land pavilion or let's go over to the aquarium and then we're going to go back over to world showcase Epcot, we did quite a bit of that bouncing around. Mm-hmm. I think the other parks, we did less of it. Mm-hmm. But I think we did we did such a good job of doing the front, everything we wanted to do in the front part of Epcot, except for one or two things on the first day mm-hmm. that we got to explore World Showcase on another day. So there, our third time in Epcot, we did a lot of bouncing around so we could finish up some of the things that we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. But even then, the time it took us to get from mexico over to over to the wall where we were painting the mural was a lot shorter than i expected it to be yes the the time it would take you to get from the the front side of world showcase back over to spaceship earth seemed like half as long as what i remember it being Mm -hmm. and i don't know if that's because they've updated traffic patterns in epcot or whatever but even 
Epcot wasn't the only one that felt smaller to me. They all felt smaller to me. And I, I think specifically to, to your comment towards Epcot, I think they've eliminated so many of the straight lines that used to be there. Right. That made it seem so much longer. Yeah. Yeah. Because of Celebration Gardens and things like that, where it actually makes you curve your path. Right. Huh. What an interesting... I wasn't expecting you to say something like that. So yeah. that's mm-hmm. interesting. I wasn't expecting to feel that. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Candace. there it is. <laughs> On that note, let's switch to your final wrap it up. What what changed what changed your mind or what changed in your mind? Okay. So I don't know that it really changed in my mind, but I will say that when we were getting ready to go on this trip, I was pretty apprehensive because of everything we have watched, everything we've heard from various influencers that we are fond of and just not having seen it since the pandemic closures and all the changes that have taken place since then. I was concerned that the magic was going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And it 100% is not. If anything, it's more so. Good. I'm really glad you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I 100% agree. Everything about this trip, like there was no piece of it other than other guests which that'll be a separate episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the only thing that pulls you away from the magic at Disney is other guests. We'll do a whole episode on that at some point. Mm. But the the way around the parks, the detail that you notice, they like they are doing a good job of staying true to who they are as a theme park, as a most magical place on earth, happiest place on earth, whatever. They're doing a good job of staying true to that and immersing you in it. And I think rebuilding. Right. Because I do think there was a point prior to the pandemic closures based on leadership where there was a danger running through the company of that magic being lost. They still need to bring back more live entertainment, but even that is starting to come back a little bit here and there. Good. Yeah. Good. Like we sat and we watched Mariachi Cobre in the Mexico Pavilion and they got up and they said, you know, we've been performing here for the last since opening day. And it's only because you all stop and watch that we are able to continue to do this. So thank you for that. Oh, and they were fantastic. Mm hmm. But and and a good number of people did stop and watch. There was a pretty mm-hmm. good sized crowd around that. And then it's big enough they had to tape off the ground so they didn't close off walkways to sit and watch them. Yes, but because we were also there during Festival of the Arts, there was different musical acts popping up through the different countries at certain times of the day, and just little groups of you know little pockets of people would stop and watch, and that made my heart so happy because mm-hmm. to watch influencers to listen to people. It's just like, it's all about attraction, 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 attraction. Don't stop for anything else. Don't do anything else. Just go. Mm -hmm. Just be on your phone, fiddle faddling, and just go on all these attractions and don't worry about anything else. Don't look at anything. Don't experience anything. Nothing. Just go, 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 go. And that's not at all Mm -mm. what our experience was. If you want that, go to Universal. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah, Disney has not forsaken what makes them special. Candace even got pixie dusted on this trip. I did. Really? Yes. So in Magic Kingdom, they have the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique location, which is the only one on property that's open right now. And they have an, uh Magic Kingdom. Okay, sorry. I didn't know if I heard you. No, that's okay. Like castle. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, they also have a location in Grand Floridian and one in Disney Springs, but those have not reopened yet. Oh, okay. Since the pandemic closures. But right around the corner from that, there's a little gift shop called Sir Mickey's. And anyone, you don't have to have a boutique appointment, but you can go in and say, I would like some pixie dust, please. And you get pixie dusted and they have have you make a wish and they sprinkle the pixie dust and then you walk around and you're glittery all day. And it was fabulous. Bucket list. Yes. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh, my God. 
and one of the few things you don't have to pay for around Disney. Yep. Really? Free. Oh, my. Do you hear that, folks? Free. It's for free. <laughs> for everybody else, it's super expensive, though. Yeah. So, yeah, just, so just yeah. us. Just if you uh, run a podcast. Right. Yeah. That's in its so. fourth season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry to get your hopes up. Okay. Right. <laughs> just so next time we go, it's not a line of 4,000 people waiting to get pixie right. dusted. Yeah. Smart. Mm-hmm. So cool. So then is it like loose glitter or do they put it in your hair? They put it in your hair, but it's the really, really fine, like iridescent glitter. Mm -hmm. So it's not like going to fall in your eyes and get irritated and all that. And it's just like. It's not a lot of it either. It's not a lot. It's just it's a like, little dusting. But I had glitter in my hair for days. In a wand shaker thing that they just kind of shake yeah. over your head. Okay. So it's not like a gel or. No. no and okay. it's not like they have a shotgun loaded with glitter. That they just shoot. Homer's makeup gun. <laughs> Hold still. Right. still. <laughs> Close your eyes. Yeah, this might hurt a little. <laughs> Do not move. Right. <laughs> Stay real still. But yeah, that, that that was a good thing. And I mean, there's little things like that that are just, yeah, you might feel like a bit of a fool doing it, but it was fine. Mm, no. And mm. I got pixie dust. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's the thing with Disney. You have to be willing to go in. And just forget that you're an adult right. or forget mm -hmm. that you live in the real world. Right. And as as a above child age person, be willing to go into that gift shop and ask to be pixie dusted. Mm -hmm. Because so many like the person that was in front of Candace was a mom and her little girl. Mm -hmm. And the little girl was the only one that got pixie dusted. And Candace was like, me next. <laughs> no, but that. what a wonderful influence that is on other people. Yeah, who are like, I want to do this, but I don't want to, you know, like look like a fool or embarrass yeah. myself. Right. Like, no, it was mm -hmm. fun. There's no room for that in Disney World, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I walk around for the rest of the day and several days after, glittering, mm -hmm. and nobody batted their eye or looked at me like, "What is wrong with you?" Mm -hmm. Or nothing. It was just, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. And that's why I think the magic still exists is because you can be willing to go let yourself be a kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you feel safe and you feel comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll say it for the zillionth time, it's because of the cast members. Right. Oh, I was going to say, I bet the cast members were just as joyful doing it. Oh, absolutely. You as she was like, oh, of course. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just turned well, five, thanks. Just <laughs> <laughs> made... The little girl in me. You made my Disney heart happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, okay. And, you know, some kids don't get that privilege to go when they're that little. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you know. I mean, I didn't go for the first time until I was 23. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the mm -hmm. little seven-year-old inside of you. Mm -hmm. It's like. Mm -hmm, still lives on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that she does. <laughs> <laughs> same <laughs> okay is that it anything else that was a good the magic not being gone feels like a good place to wrap this one up yeah i think that's it okay okay just remember everybody there is a great big beautiful tomorrow and we'll see you real soon <laughs>